Hi everyone, from me, Brent Graham of Good for the Game, and welcome to Thursday night edition of the Handicap Rugby Chat That Matters. We've got some great rugby to talk about tonight, Super Rugby Week 7. We've also got the Champions Cup last 16. It was quite interesting going through those fixtures and seeing how many teams actually met each other in the group stages. Bit of a bizarre tournament so far, but we are certainly down to the business end. And I've got two guests coming in tonight, and I hesitate slightly when I say that. One of them's already in studio. The other one's got his hands full with a couple of kids there in New Zealand, and he's going to try and get in at some point. The old time change has thrown us out a little bit. But let me first of all introduce the guest who is here, and that's the Oracle. Oracle, great to see you, mate. Welcome back to the show. Um, yeah, thanks very much, Brent. I just, uh, my Italian isn't very good the last time I was on the show. Um, but yes, I... Uh, Happy to be back. It's been, uh, I would have been on last week and I'll tell you, I would have told you to back the Lions. I would have told you to back the Stormers minus, both of those lost, obviously. And I would have told you to take the Sharks, which I'd gone against the week before with you. And last week was an absolute sitter. Um, so, yeah, I won money on the Sharks, lost on the Stormers, lost on the Lions. And that Bulls result at halftime, I thought I was in. I didn't cover. I just, yeah, so I ended up losing on rugby on the weekend, uh, but I'm happy for the Sharks. I mean, they found something, and um, yeah, they've moved on. So good, a good weekend of rugby, but I did lose money. Yeah, it was interesting because I didn't get my best bet newsletter out, and I, in the end, I didn't get very involved. But as it happened, all of the bets that I would have put in the newsletter would have lost as well, so I wouldn't have gotten down too well. So one of those weekends where perhaps I didn't get too involved and it was better. So, right, let's just have a look at some of the comments because we've got a big Irish contingent that's come in. And I reckon Oracle could run for some sort of parliamentary seat there in Ireland and he'd be okay. Mark Dumphy coming in. Shane saying, hopefully, Oracle, King Oracle can cheer me up. He's on a four month losing betting run. Shane, I think you and I are singing from the same hymn sheet there, unfortunately, at the moment. Blake says, Oracle in the house, get a six pack and get comfortable. And Henrik says, great guest tonight. Yeah, we are certainly hoping the Moss Man could join us later. And uh, Brent has some tan. Actually, yes, I bride on Easter Sunday, I must tell you, and I flippin' didn't put sun cream on or anything, and I got absolutely roasted. So it is actually a legitimate tan. So that's not, so that's not a shirt, Brent. Those are tan lines, are they? I think they are, although um, he does I look orange. I know sometimes I have been compared to Donald Trump with my orange uh, complexion on the show, but <laughs> we'll, we'll have a look. Shane just coming in. Case in point, took Bulls plus 10 against Leinster last week and blasted away. Like the King said, I must be honest, at half time, I thought the Bulls were right in that game. But I see a knowing nod there from the Oracle. Right, Oracle, we got quite a bit of rugby to get through uh, tonight. We're going to talk a little bit of Champions Cup. Quite a strange tournament in that a lot of the fixtures we've seen here, the teams have actually met before. And I'm just going to go, we'll, we'll leave Super Rugby to the end because I'd obviously, in particular, like to get Nathan's comments for Super Rugby if he, can, if he comes in. But we'll start off with this game. It's one that I haven't got too many firm opinion about it, the Harlequins. Minus eight and a half against Glasgow. Before I bring you in, I will give you one stat that I saw on Twitter. I think it was Russ Petty on Twitter. And I, I might get it wrong by number, but it was something like 25 out of 28 fixtures or 29 fixtures in this tournament last season in the knockout stages were won by the home team. So just that little stat to, to bring you in. Yeah, so this Harley Quinn's team is two for two, I see. And, I, and I, I'm just going to start off by saying there's no granny's pension on this stuff. Um, this is, um, I don't know how to put it, but this is um, this is piggy bank stuff. So I've got a little uh, uh, on my bar counter over here. I've got a thing called I, I call it the line pig. So it's a it's a piggy bank, but it's a. I Lions saw that when rugby, I was at your house. Lions Lions rugby piggy bank. So we call it the line pig in the family, and um, the only thing that goes in there are, are five rand coins and uh, ten rand notes. So that's pretty much it. I don't think I've seen a 20 rand note go in, and yes, there's been the odd one or two rand coin, but this is lion pig um, depth here. This is, honestly, this is small stuff. Don't get involved terribly here unless you've really done your homework. But as Brent said, you know, home teams win, but then you look at the Harlequins, and they've only won two of their last four home games, and, you know, this, this Scottish side is not too bad. So just off the top of it, I'm looking at plus eight and a half. Looks like a little bit of value to me, but only a, a little bit. So I'd go the plus here, but I wouldn't go ballistic on this one. I don't have a great feeling on it. Let's have a look at some of the Sorry, I just want to say one other thing, Brent. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, you're going into this tournament, and this is the second year now for the South African teams. I've always said the winners of South Africa going into Europe are the Irish, obviously, and partly the Italians and the Welsh and the Scottish because they're getting to play South Africans all the time. And the big losers in world rugby are New Zealand. And I suppose at the same time, the Australians are winners as well, and so are the Fijians and the Samoans because they're getting to play against New Zealand and they don't have too much else to go on. So, you know, when I look at a fixture like this, the English and the French don't play the South Africans un outside of this tournament. So I'm going to say the Scottish team probably worth a little bit more than plus eight and a half, maybe should have been plus six or plus four. So I'm going to go for, yeah, I'm going to go for Glasgow here. Small bet right, on the plus. Right, just looking at a couple of the comments. I like your hands. I agree. I think this, your hands, this could be a game of points. And I also like Harry's comment there, Quinn's to win this easy enough. Uh, but I'm, I'm kind of leading. I was leaning towards a minus, Oracle. You pretty much putting me on the fence there. I think I'm going to go for, for points on that game, most likely. I do have a few other much stronger fancies in the Champions Cup, I must tell you. So like Oracle, this is one for the old five rand turn. I must ask you, how many five rands do you think you've got in that uh, little piggy? Uh, so we got a we got a bit broke one weekend. I remember this movie where the kid said to the mother, why are we poor? And she said, no, we're not poor, we're broke. There's a very big difference. And for those people who think about their own financial situation, I've been broke many times, but I've never been poor. So she's right. And you will raid the piggy bank or the lion pig when you're a little bit broke, but not quite poor. So, yeah, it's bought beers, it's bought food, it's bought all sorts of stuff. It's never got full, but it will be full one day. And when it gets full, maybe I'll go away for a weekend. I don't know. Ah, nice. I like it, Oracle. Right, let's get into this game. It's an early kickoff. I think it's 1.30 South African time on Saturday. I can tell you that I drove to Pretoria last night to watch a rugby game. I got all the way there with my wife. The heavy storm at Pretoria. The game was cancelled and I drove back to Joburg. So I couldn't watch my son play. What about last game. night? Last night, yeah. It was a Wednesday. It was a midweek. Uh, it was a, like a res game at, at, Tux, at Pretoria University. So I drove the absolute downpour. I mean, Joburg as well. So conditions underfoot may not be that firm in this one i guess i would advise points punters just to keep an eye out there hasn't been any points line yet a bit of support for the bulls in the good for the game forum here on the handicap leon you know french teams notoriously bad travelers they did edge the bulls by one point when they met in leon earlier in the campaign but i just yeah you know, look at this handicap gavin i say you know I'm, I'm a bit nervous of the 17 and a half although i do think the bulls will win comfortably yeah, so obviously, as you said, uh, with bad weather, that does change things a little bit. But I'd like to say, yeah, I know, I'd like to swear right now, Mark, can tell you that that makes absolutely, absolutely no difference in our family. It's a um, just feed the feed the lion pig and one day it will uh, it'll feed you back. Um, with regards to this game, Brent, if it's bad weather and the ground's a bit soft, yes, and, and if it's raining at the time of the game, as a lot of you know, um, yeah, betting on points is a, it's a weather bet. I'm going to yes. tell you, you're right, your comment was correct. The French teams don't travel very well. I've also heard, and I and I actually disputed this over a few years, hearing it from six, seven, eight, nine, ten different people from different places in the world telling me the French don't give a flying crap about these tournaments unless they actually get to the semifinal. It's almost like let me know when you're in the final and we'll come watch you or come support you. So I'm going to tell you minus 17 is not enough here. The Bulls can win this game by 40. The French don't care about it. They probably, they've probably sent a very weak team. And in that weak team, there might be three or four people that want to you know, put their hand up and they might play quite well, but they don't want to be here. They've come to South Africa to Safari to have a few beers and maybe catch up with some people they know down here. But minus 17 is not enough. This, yeah, as Mark's just said, yeah. The Bulls can win this game by 30 or 40. So what you've got to do here is don't take the 9 to 10. Don't take a minus 22, a minus 25, a minus 29, and have a go rather at a price. So lower your stake, get yourself a bigger price, and watch the game. Because, sure, Leon can lose, can lose this game by 7 or 8. It's unlikely the right – the well, let me put it this way. There's probably a 70% chance of it being uh, over 20 and a 30% chance of it being, you know, under 20. So I'd go minus here with confidence. 
I wouldn't take 17. I'd take a much bigger one and rather reduce your stake and enjoy the game. That's a big pleasure. minus pull there. And it's not a big minus. Most no. hand, uh, this is a small no, no, minus. A big minus. I mean, a big minus. You're taking the bigger minus. Yes, yes. correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. And uh, the Moss Man is joining us. Moss Man, you managed to get away. Did you palm the, the kids off on the wife or did you manage to speed a little bit to get you? <laughs> <enjoy that? laughs> I was, uh, uh, option one. <laughs> Excellent. So, listen, know. before we start, I know yeah. you've got a hard close at, at 10 o'clock South African time because you've got a, a meeting. So yeah, what correct. we're doing is we're talking Champions Cup. We'll bring you we'll in. But if you're under time pressure, when you know you've got about 15 minutes left or something, give me a shout because we obviously want to talk Super Rugby with you while you're on here as well. So just yeah, shout if you're in, under any pressure there. Oh, look, plenty of time, right? It's, we're 10 minutes in and we're talking about the second game. Third. Why don't we move on to the third? Okay. Yeah. Do this one. Record time. Excellent. <laughs> and you can uh, you can kick off with this game. Anything anything on this one? Uh, yeah, I've actually already got some money on the balls. Um, so uh, I think probably everybody's seeing the same stuff, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, it's Leon sending the, the second team or at least uh, a good chunk of them. And, yeah, we've talked about this numerous times before, just the, the intentions of teams, you know, the message that they're sending. That's not a good message. This is clearly not something that they're really interested in or up for. Yeah, 100%. And I like Darren there. He's looking for a Bulls points line as well. So, yeah, I'll also be keeping my eye out on that. And also, I'll tweak what the conditions are. If we do have quite a bit of rain and thunderstorms around in the area at the moment, if anything like that comes up, I'll let people know. Right, let's move on to the next game, Mossman. I'm going to start with you. Exeter up against Bath. This is very much uh, a tight game and quite a rare situation where we've got the visitors' slight favourites at minus one and a half Bath. Uh, yeah, I think this is this is sort of Bath all day, actually. Like, uh, I think, you know, Bath are one of the, probably one of the, the form teams and one of the best teams in, in Europe this season. Uh, you would have lost a lot of money opposing Bath <laughs> this year, so... Um, I don't think this is uh, another spot for it. I think Exeter have been a team where all season, really, they've just scraped home. They've, they've put together strings of really close wins, uh, last-minute penalties to win games, that sort of stuff. And, and I've mentioned this before, like that stuff eventually regresses back to what, the, you know, the mean, back to what the team really is. You, you can't keep winning, you know, um, coin flip games in those in those ways and uh, i think eventually that catches up with you and i think it catches up with them this week okay well i'm going to ask you a quick opinion on the first game because one two eight six z has asked any opinion on the quins game before i go to to oracle on this one yeah could be on the uh in the minority here but um actually don't mind um glasgow in this in this spot um i think it's one of these ones too where it went from six and a half to seven and a half when the teams came out and i couldn't see any really good reason for that that both teams seemed pretty much full strength there wasn't anything kind of noticeable for that so i don't know what it was that people were uh expecting to see that they didn't see but um yeah i think i think glasgow all season have been kind of underrated i think there's a perception right that the scottish teams um are a bit rubbish um but you know you don't you only have to look at the table to say that um you know Glasgow are, are, are pretty decent. You know, it's um, it's effectively like I mean, with only having two teams, it's it's kind of you know a, a Scottish test team in some ways. Like you know, if you went through a lot of test players, um, and and this level of rugby is you know getting up towards test rugby that with those knockout conditions, um, I think Harlequins, they again they they're a team that has that perception of being able to put up big scores and being very flashy and and all that sort of stuff. But you know, this is possibly not that kind of game. So, uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be an interesting one um, to kind of high-flying teams as well. We're making good progress here. And on that note, I hand over to the Oracle. Exit a plus one and a half Oracle. I just want to say one thing about the Harlequins. So, so I grew up in Joburg, obviously, but I spent a lot of my adult life in Durban. And there's a, there's a pub called Harlequins in uh, South Beach, uh, a block away from the beach. And, and there's a... There's a um, rugby club um, my kid played against um, in on the bluff called the Harlequins, and it's very difficult to, you know, when you've been hammered this Harlequins name and you've got this dodgy pub in South Beach in Durban and you've got this one on the bluff to take the, that name. So, yeah, I, I I just can't. But anyway, uh, we'll move on. Right, uh, Bath. I'm, I'm I'm with I'm with the Kiwi here. The bath, uh, it's a hot bath. You can take a little bit more than minus one and a half. 
can probably go for minus four or five. And as Henrik um, pointed out with my comment earlier, is yes, everybody thinks the nine to ten or the point eight five is the right way to go. But if you really like a team, go for it. Eh? Just take a bigger minus or or a lower plus, whichever side you're on, and rather go for the value of the price rather than the than the, the actual handicap number. Because how many times, you know, you you take a minus on a team or you take a plus on a team. And they beat that handicap by 10, 12, 15 points. And you go, oh, I won. But you didn't win because you could have got three to one or four to one even taking, you know, if you really like the team. So, you know, take your main bet at the nine to 10 if you want, but have a have a go at a, at a price. And in this case, I I like Bath here. And I'm going to say I'm surprised it's only one. I would have made this game probably four or five. And I think this game can be closer to 10. Right. I think it's, um, there. Before we watch the next game, I do want to get you on, Nathan. I'd like your comment on the on, on the line that's sort of 9 to 10. Are you the type of punter who sticks to that? I tend to always stick to the 9 to 10, but I, I totally hear the logic of taking the bigger price. And I know Compos on the Good for the Game forum, we haven't seen him in a while, but he was always a comp- He was always said, take the 15 to 10, not, not the 9 to 10. What are your thoughts? Uh, in a way, I think it doesn't matter. Like What you need to understand is how much a point is worth. And because a, a point, and it depends on which point it is, and that's you know, like so, you know, a point between zero and ten is going to be roughly ten cents, you know, maybe more. Um, but as the further away you get from that, the, the less value it is. You know, the point between twenty five and twenty six is worth almost nothing. You know, you you can't, you're not realistically going to thread that needle. So, so you actually need to know when you're looking at a price that uh, a particular line and the point. You know, a point away from that, which one is the better value? You actually need to be able to understand, you know, that, that one is better value than the other, and that, that's effectively what you're looking for. And then just just you know, for, on that, reflecting on that comment about about sort of taking the bigger pluses, I think people need to sort of move the way that they're thinking about this, and, and instead of looking at one and a half and thinking that that is a score prediction, it's, it's not a prediction by the bookies. It's it's a it's a line where fifty percent of the time it's going to land on one side and fifty percent it's going to land on the other. That's all it is. You know, it's not a prediction of what the score is going to be. It's a very different thing. Um, you know, the distribution of outcomes that you'll get could be heavily weighted to one side. You could have a team that you know is so erratic that they could blow you out by sixty, but then they could lose by thirty on the other side. And then other teams are very consistent, so that their range of outcomes is falling into a very narrow band. But it's just fifty percent on either side. Yeah, good good points there. And I think the other point I, I must make, Gav, is if you're early to the early to the party punter, like I know Nathan, you like to get the early lines. At that stage, bookies don't often well, certainly the local books that I've seen, you don't really get that alternate line um, necessarily at that early point. They they tend to come out with the nine to tens, and then later in the week you start getting the you know the minus the, the fifteen to ten lines and that. But yeah, some some food for thought there and. Uh, yeah, Gav, I, I must say I'm kind of also looking to maybe try a different strategy because like Henrik, I haven't been on a good run, so I might be looking at something like what you what you say, mate. Anything to add before we move on, Gav? Just have a bath. Make sure it's hot and go minus. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm going to start with you in the next game. I've got a fancy in this one. We've got Stormers plus one and a half against La Rochelle. I can tell you that these tides met early in the season. The Stormers winning, I think, in about the 79th or 80th minute with a Marnie Leboc kick. The bookies can barely separate the sides, but they do make the French side narrow favourites on the road. Yeah, it's a wrong favourite kind of thing. You can't have Stormers at plus one and a half against a French side in Cape Town. Um, yes, they underperformed last week um, on a minus 11 against the team that you know, thrashed the, the Sharks. And as I said, I would have gone minus last week, even on the back of them beating the Sharks. Sorry, the Sharks beating them. I I did think it was a bit high last week, but I also thought I, d- I lowered my stake. I didn't have the bigger bet that I would have had. I just took a lower bet than a lower stake bet that I would have had had um, they beat the Sharks. But yeah, I just I can't I can't have I can't have a French side minus in Cape Town against the Storm side. So for me, wrong favourite. And the fact that I'm getting more than nine to ten about the win, I know Henrik just said he's going. I'm all over the Stormers here. This is a big price. Take it. 
Yeah, well, before I bring the masked man in here, I'm going to say Henrik is all over the La Rochelle. Yeah, um, the Mark making the point. They are going for the third title in a row. And Darren also on La Rochelle. And masked man, I'm going to bring you in. Blake also on La Rochelle. So it's Oracle, the one fish swimming against the current here at the moment. I've got to tell you that I'm with the guys in the live chat. I think La Rochelle are going to win this game. And I think they're going to teach a bit of a rugby lesson to the Stormers. Nathan? That's why. They can come with the Irish shirts and do it. I'm with the Oracle on this one, actually. Um, I think if, if you went back and, and looked at the, the results of the knockout stage last year, uh, up until the final, which, um, you know, obviously was a, a pretty kind of controversial and famous result, all the home teams won and, and in general won pretty handily. So um, I think that the home advantage here is probably you know, not being priced in enough. I don't know, it's a little bit of contradiction because they did actually back in a way favour in the previous game with Bath. But, you know, I think the trip from Bath to Exeter is very different from uh, the trip from Correct. France to Town. So um, not really comparable. So so I think, um, I mean, in general, and, and this goes across a lot of sports, like in the NFL for years, you, you made money if you backed home underdogs. So, you know, uh, yeah, as I said, with the Oracle on this one. Right, so both panelists are going for um, the Stormers here. I reckon the value there, and virtually everyone in the live chat is is on La Rochelle. Okay, what you got to say for us? <laughs> so, so Henrik's got season tickets. Maybe you should give them up as a prize and let and let a a Cape Townian who doesn't have any money to go to the game go and sit in Henrik's season tickets and watch the Stormers win. Well, I've got two season tickets to the Lions. I'm giving a uh, first prize. Uh, one season ticket, <laughs> second prize, two season tickets. If you do, they come with do they come with car guards and cases of beer? <laughs> no, no, no. Don't worry. There's no ways I'll, I'll have season tickets to Ellis Park at the moment. But anyway, some good banter in the chat there as well. I am going to stick with Nathan then for the next game. Two sides also met each other, and they met, I think it was something like 55 15 to Bordeaux when they met in Bordeaux in the group stages. But for my money, Saracens have turned a bit of a corner this season. I personally think they're big runners in this one. Let's hear what the Moss man has got to say. Yeah, they've been patchy, though, I think. Like, they kind of look like they turned a corner and then, you know, fell off the edge of a cliff sort of last week against uh, against Northampton. In a game where they actually had been backed pretty heavily, I think they might have, you know, been, might have also been favourites. But, uh, yeah, I, again, Bordeaux is one of these teams that you would have lost a lot of money betting against Bordeaux this year. They've, like, been an absolute cover machine. Um this is a game where, and again, it, it, it might appear like an in-running game. If if Saracens kind of get down early, I think they'll make a bit of a business decision. They might decide that, you know, this is uh, a year that we could potentially win the, the league, um, but we're not a realistic chance of, of winning the Cup. So, um, yeah, I think uh, I, I could only look towards Bordeaux here. Bordeaux for the Mossman, and it looked like a nod of the head from the Oracle. Yeah, small bet minus here. I wouldn't go too drastic on this one, but I will tell you that um, it's if this was 15 or 16, I would have said no. But at nine, I'm definitely interested. Um, yeah, the home team, number one Bordeaux French team, they will take it a little bit more seriously because they're at home. And as you pointed out with the Exeter Bath team, it's not in a, yes, it's an away game, but it's a, you know, same country, not too far away. This is... I don't know if the English take this seriously either. I mean, I'm starting to worry more about these. When I they've got squads of like 50 of these teams. You know, we we've not had that before um, in South Africa. Um, so we need to get used to this, you know, changing tournaments and moving people around. So yeah, nine and a half. I'm I'm on minus here, uh, but not too big. I think it's the right. Admiral. The Admiral agreeing with you guys. He says no team in the world can live with Bordeaux when they're on it. Minus for me. So a bit of uh, agreement there on that one. I must say, I came into the show thinking Saracen's on the plus, but I haven't really, I've just based that on the odd thing I've seen. And, and I can tell you that two of you plus the Admirables, more more than enough to sway me either into a no bet or onto you, the other You weren't side. worried about the Admiral having his uh, uh, telescope out there. He might be looking, <laughs> no. looking, at the, looking at the handicap board from a long way away. The long, long way right. away. Yeah, well, that's why I've got my glasses on. Need them these days. Right, Gab, let's stick with you. Big handicap here. Lens the minus 17 and a half. They ran away with things against the Bulls in the second half last week. And they play a Leicester side that is, uh, I think, battling a little bit on all fronts at the moment. Same handicap as the Bulls v. Leon, Gab. What are you going to do here? 
I'm going to tell you that if it's the same team, and I don't know the teams here, and, and I don't generally worry about players, but I will say this. I'm not too interested in this fixture because I'm not reading Leinster correctly. I will say that the minus, if it's the same Leinster team that beat the Bulls last week, I don't care who's on who's on the other side, Leinster will win. And they'll be, sorry, we'll beat that handicap. Um, that Bulls team wasn't bad. They played very well. They played very well for probably 55 minutes of the game and got thumped. But they did give up as well. If you remember a couple of plays at the end of the game where, you know, tackles could have been made or, you know, balls going out could have been stopped. They just sort of gave up. And I still said to my kid, you know, this is like a, a little bit of mass fixing. You know, when, when tennis players don't play properly, the umpire will say play properly or you'll get a fine or you'll get a, a warning or whatever it is. Bulls, a lot of the plays in the last 20 minutes of the game, they gave up. So that score could have been a lot less. But I'm going to say Leinster, the minus looks right. But if it's not the same team as last week, if they've lost even as much as 10% of that team, say in a 15 or in a 23-man squad, let's say three or four players out, I'm going to say you could probably have uh, a bit of a plus interest. But honestly, I don't know what to do with this game. I haven't called Leinster right. And I don't want to put any money. I'm not putting any money on this game. Just a quick shout out to Shane there before I go to Nathan on this one. We will have a quick chat out on the US Masters before the end of the show. Happily. He, does ask Nathan, he asks if Nathan has got a, a model for the golf. That would be interesting. I can tell no. you, golf punters, also, <laughs> there are golf punters out there, they even know that what type of green the grass, that's, they'll base their decisions on all sorts of things. I'm not in that sort of league either, I must tell you. Uh, right, Nathan, this game, big handicap. We've heard from Mark Lenz. They've got a few injuries. But, yeah, also a hard team to oppose because if they're on song, they can do what they did to the Bulls. Yeah. I mean, Lenz, they might have a few injuries, but, you know, we've seen even their second team is just full of violent internationals. Like, it's an absolutely stacked squad. I just think that Leicester are a little bit dysfunctional at the moment. You know, their, their results have been pretty erratic and pretty uninspiring over the last couple of weeks. And, uh, again... All of these English teams, um, I mean, there are exceptions, maybe Northampton, Bath might be the exceptions, but the others, the, the, the Premier, the Premier Rugby table is a very weird thing at the moment. You sort of have Northampton at the top and then you've got six other teams or something on, on eight and six wins. So they're all in with a shot, all in with a chance. Um, again, I just wonder whether some of them, if they if they don't think they're realistic chances of winning some of these games and, and the big caps kind of tell you that they're not, that maybe that again they'll make a bit of a business decision um, late in the game. Their focus might be on the domestic competitions rather than on this one. Right, uh, just checking there what happened to Oracle, but I see he's back. But we're going to stick with you, Nathan, for the next game. We've got a Northampton minus six and a half against a Munster. This handicap's been very stable all week. Um, I want to let get your opinion first, so I can quickly change mine if necessary. But I've actually got a bit of a view on this one. What do you what do you think on this game? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really too sure what to make of it because, again, I, I've loved backing the Saints this year. That's um, It's been a bit of a moneymaker. Um, but on the flip side is, you know, Munster with the, the kind of the big game experience, um, in, you know, in, especially in the European Cup. So I, I don't, I'm not 100% sure what to make of it. Again, I, I think that it might be lined about right. What what will probably happen is that if if Munster cover, it'll be somewhere close to that number, and if Northampton cover, it'll be something you know, it could be anything between sort of fifteen and twenty because uh, that's just the kind of team that they like. You know, they can put up big scores, so that doesn't really tell you a lot because again, thinking about that distribution of outcomes, um, we know if Northampton win, they're going to blow out. So I I don't know, I don't know. But if if I was going to put money on this, I, I could only really put it on Northampton. Undertaker saying months they haven't been great this year, although they did well on them last year. They, of course, were the URC champions. And Joe saying pretty much exactly what you said there, Nathan. It's either going to be really round about that line or it's going to be Saints on absolute blood. I'm actually in the Saints camp here. I haven't been impressed with Munster much in recent weeks. Although I must say, I can't remember which group game it was. Are they drawn to Bayonne at home? And I also backed them against one of the English sides, but I backed the English side and they actually ended up beating them. I think it was Sale or something like that. So, Oracle, what are you going to do on this one? You're going to split us? Munster. Munster for Oracle. Confident call is uh, any justification? or we just, Because, I mean, it's not like you not to justify. 
I just can't believe the Irish team is plus six and a half here. It's, it looks wrong. That's all. Mathematically, visually, looks wrong. I'm on Munster. Small bit, but it looks wrong. It just looks. It looks wrong. Daryl and Johan, or Darren. Darren is saying if if Mitchell is back, he would be on the Saints. And Johan fancies the Saints to cover the cap. Oracle, we're going to stick with you. We're making good progress here, gents, on the uh, Champions Cup. And I think. Could it be that we're on to the last game already? Please shout if I have missed any. But we've got Toulouse here, minus 14 and a half against Racing, a French derby. I would have to say that the bookmakers are factoring in the fact here that Racing, due to their seeding, are probably not going to, uh, you know, they're, they're probably going to almost take a business decision, as, as Nathan says, on, on this one. Anything here, Oracle? Yeah, so is this a, is this a, this is obviously knockout, right? Yeah, you lose yeah. this game, you're out. Yeah. Now, this puzzles me. I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying, and that's probably what's happening, but I don't understand that behavior. I mean, that's foreign to us as South Africans. We're going to win games. We're not going to, oh, we're involved in another tournament. We're going to do this. So, you know what I'm going to tell you? Don't touch this game. Watch it for 20 minutes. Watch it for 30 minutes. Watch it for eight minutes. I don't know. So, yeah, Sunday afternoon, I'll watch for a few minutes, and I'll make a decision right now. This is confusing. This handicap looks way wrong. It's almost like they know the result. And as we know in sport, you don't always know the result. So, yeah, no bet for me at this at this line. I'll watch it a little bit and have a go on Sunday. I just, yeah, I just I don't understand that behavior. But I was going to say, I'm out of impressed with your homework for the show until you arrived in round in, in the eighth game and said, is this knockout? I, I, up until then, I was super impressed. No, it's not, I, I know it's knockout, but it's almost like yeah. what what's going The handicap is, has, has made me just yeah. confirm that, I suppose. That's all. Yeah, no, I think, like Darren says, yeah, I think Russing without a few players. So this is one of those games where I guess it could blow out, Nathan, if, if, if uh, you know, the French teams on the road are just notoriously, even if you look at the top 14, I, mean, I was looking at some of the sort of recent form of some of these teams, and it's win at home, lose away, win at home, and the occasional different result thrown in there. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, it's funny that you say that. Like, uh, if you want to see a really exaggerated version of that behavior, you look at Pro D2, and I think what happens in Pro D2 is that the, uh, the I guess, all these uh, French billionaires who own these teams, like... All they want is to is for the, the home team to turn up and fans to show up and they get a good day out and the home team wins and everyone goes home happy. And so, you know, um, everyone's on the same page. You, you send a, a weekend team to your away games and uh, the fans are all happy in the stadium and uh, everyone has a great day. <laughs> and obviously nobody, there must be no traveling away fans because why would you bother? But um, it, it is a, quite an unusual mindset, I think, that it's like uh, maybe they feel like they're in the, they're in the entertainment business. You know, rather than in the, the the rugby business or the the, the winning games business, I don't I don't really know, but it, 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 it's it's ridiculous how often you see this sort of thing. It's like you know, just um, you, if you if you had a star player in some of these leagues, you um, you might as well just uh, don't book a seat on the, the the bus for him because he's not he's not going to the away games. He, they'll just roll him out for the home games, um, put on a bit of a show for everybody, and, and that's it. So um, yeah, that a, a long sort of winded way of saying that everybody hates racing too like um it's uh they're a team that everyone's like really love to kick this year and, and talk about betting against but if you pick your spots um betting on them has actually been pretty good as it has for me um they, they're going to tell us whether they're up for it by the the team that they select so again it's probably not something that you want to get involved in now there's really no reason for it um yeah, but if they if they send a message that they are they are not interested, then yeah, you uh, you're probably looking towards to lose. Tell the yeah, woman no, I love you. One to eight for the team. What's that, Gav? So tell the woman behind him hello. <laughs> <laughs> you met the oracle. <laughs> Excellent. Remember, pick up the kids. Leave Nathan on the show. <laughs> yeah, she definitely and doesn't. Yeah. That's uh, that we're talking about rugby. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Excellent. Well, gents, we'll come back to the best bets on the cup, but we've got four, only four Super Rugby games. We've hit the stage of the season where teams start getting bye weeks. And Nathan, uh, we'll get into it straight away. I'm going to kick off with you. This handicap has shifted out a bit. It was Blues minus 21 and a half when it opened in South Africa. It's gone 23 and a half. We've got a point sign of 60. I initially went 19 and a half, so, but I'm willing to put my hand up and say I was 
I was wrong. I think this handicap has, has probably moved in the right direction. What are your thoughts? I don't I don't know. Um, and I, I can tell you that it's, it's currently raining here in Auckland. Um, there may be a little bit of rain later on. Um, I do actually have this game um, as an under, unders game. And my numbers do kind of favour the force as well. Um, I think part of that is... I mean, the, the force of the, to, to their credit, I guess, they haven't rested anybody. You know, they're bringing their full strength team, which is good. Not not everybody would do that in an away game like this. Um, Harry Plummer starting at 10 uh, for the Blues. And, you know, I can tell you that this um, he doesn't have a lot of fans out there, especially amongst, um, amongst betters. Um, they, they tend to, uh, like, putting the boot into him. So I don't know if I put my money there, but... Um, on the force, but it might be that if you could give me a big enough number on the Blues team total, that I might look towards the under there. Right, so the Blues team total, what are we looking at? Just 60 and a half minus 23 and a half, you have 30, what's it, uh, 37 and a half? What would we be looking for for Blues there? Gab, work it out, I've suddenly blanked. <laughs> uh, minus, yeah, so minus 23 leaves you at 37 and a half, uh, half is 19. Uh, sorry, yeah. no, that's, I'm wrong. That's, that's, it's 19 plus that, so 41, 41, 41, 41 plus 19. 41, 19, correct. Yeah. Okay. I was terrible. I also I blanked. As I, was, I do that calculation all the time in my head, and I was suddenly like, yeah. <laughs> absolute blank. What do you think of this one, Gav? Uh, Henrik making the point, this could be another one of those games where the Blues could win by 5 or 50. I think, you know, the, the fact that it's raining in Auckland and that may, has me thinking that Nathan's original comment on the unders points could, could come to play here. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, all my bets on uh, on the Super Rugby have been um, a value of naught point something in units. So uh, this game just it, it doesn't change. I just I can't read this. I mean, I I watched that game in Fiji where it was a thirty six all draw, and I didn't even know the rule where they carried on playing, um, and they had the sudden death. It was quite interesting. But that was the game, Nathan, two weeks ago where. You had suggested that there was a hurricane and a lot of weather coming in. And it ended up being quite a blowout. I'm not saying anything to you here, but I watched that game and the sun was shining, obviously, with a lot of overcast clouds in the distance. Full yeah. stadium. It was a nice game to watch. It was early in the morning. I remember watching it uh, while I was still in bed. Um, yeah, I just I think this tournament is it's unpredictable. I mean, a lot of the time you can, you know, the Blues will win the game, sure. But as to how many, I'm, I'm with Hen Henrik here. I think this is, this can be anything. I, I don't, again, it's one of those games I'm going to watch a few minutes of and get involved. But I do think these 60 lines, and I remember Super Rugby, Brent, you might remember as well, late 90s, early 2000s, standard points of 53, 55 and a half. They changed the rules quite a lot in rugby or laws. But geez, in games like this, 60 is not enough. Eh? I just think that, this can blow out. This could be 80. We've beaten 60 so many times in Super Rugby with you know, with relative ease and beginning of the second half. I'd be very worried if I was a points punter here. Yeah, this is the sort of game, often when I go low on points, I don't watch the game. I record it, especially if it's yeah, this is roller coaster, up, roller coaster of hell and then, stuff. And then I fast forward it and I just watch the points and hope like hell. But I want to actually ask Nathan quickly, because Nathan, we already spoke last week about that biblical weather that everyone was told about that moved the points line from 57 and a half down to like 43 and a half. And then, you know, you turned on your TV and it was sunshine. But last week I was on the unders in the Drew game. Was it against the Waratahs? And it did, okay, it did it yeah. arrive. I was on under, I think, 55 and a half. But yeah. there the conditions were shocking. <laughs> yeah. The points were absolutely flowing. I actually thought I was going to lose my bet. It's, it's like, yeah. I think Gavin's right. This is a pretty damn unpredictable tournament. What did you make of uh, that game? Yeah, I think, um, the again, the, the Fiji weather service just out by a week, you know, which is an easy mistake for them to make, of course, you know, just you know, <laughs> get, get the wrong week, right? So, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting, though, like, uh, there's, there's often like a difference between sort of perception and reality, like, you know, especially amongst betters where they get an idea in their head about how things are playing out. So, like, I mean, if you just went back and looked at last week and looked at the points totals, there were, you know, probably four out of six that went under, you know, like, and they're all pretty low scoring, you know, there's 21, 27, 19, 20. 
um, 47 yeah. and 8. They, you know, the, the, these games, uh, 31, 13, they, they're all well under 60, you know, all well under 60. It's, that's So, uh, you know, I think that it's probably one of these things too, like if, if you don't watch every game, and I'm not saying I do, I definitely don't have time for that, and then you watch one particular game and you see something, that becomes your reality of how you think it's actually going to be. Like, yes, uh, correct. And, and, that's what it feels like. And I haven't watched every game. But when I yeah. look at 60, I'm thinking that's just crazy. They're getting 70s and 75s. And yes, you're right. It's a perception. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I remember listening to someone else. I was on an NFL uh, betting podcast. And, and his philosophy was you either watch every game or no game. Like, and I'm, I'm not saying that people should do that. But like, I think no, I can understand what he's I understand what he was saying. Is that like, yeah? Because if you, you know, if you cherry pick your games and you, you, all of a sudden you think, oh yeah, I know what's, I know what's going on here. You know, I've got this team pegged or whatever, just on one game. You know, um, so I think sometimes there is a danger, and I, I know that. You know, with myself, you know, I watch certain games and you know think I've noticed things and got it all figured out, and it's like, well, actually, like that's just you know a small slice of the entire season, like. Um, yeah, so so sometimes I think it's better to be guided by actual numbers, you know, facts, rather than my own kind of perceptions, which I know myself, you know, I bring all those biases to the table. So, yeah, just something I guess you need to be self-aware of, really. Let me tell you the bad news. I watched Melbourne, the Super Round, Round 2, and I based most of my points perceptions on that. Remember, all six games flew overs. And, I mean... It took me a couple of weeks to step down from that because I made money that weekend. But I kept on thinking overs, overs, overs. And, in fact, I think the next week all six games went went unders. And, hmm. and you're so right. I kept I had those 80-point sort of scores in my mind. And, yeah, you've, you've got to look at the bigger picture sometimes there. And, yeah, but for me, though, if the weather's bad, I'd definitely be looking at the, at the unders in, in this particular game. Yeah, I just I had a quick look at that actually just on bet three six five. So forty two and a half is the the Blues team total um, for this one, which is you know it's a it's a it's a big number. It's not that they can't get there. I mean, let's be honest. Look, that number is by you know um, it is explicitly saying that there's a fifty fifty chance of it falling on either side of that line. That's what they're trying to tell you now. Your your uh, skill as a better is about saying whether you agree with that or not. You know, and it's not. This is the thing I try to emphasize to people is it's not in my perception anyway it's not about picking winners it's not about me saying this is what's going to happen it's me saying okay i think that they're saying it's 50 50 i think it's 55 45 that's what you're trying to do right yeah no good 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 points that gav i'm going to start with you on the next game quite a big betting move on this game the rebels opened up plus i handicapped this game and as i've told you guys before i do a gut feel so there's no science involved um, i'm normally pretty close but this game i was well out I actually thought the Rebels would be quite firm favourites in this game. They have firm two favourites um, after saying underdog. And I know Nathan, uh, his money was on that. We'll get his comment now. But, Gav, anything for you on this one? Points line of yeah, I'm with, I'm with the Fijians here after what I saw. I've watched two of their games so far. And I'm going to say if the, if the bookmakers think this game should be close, I felt it should be. Um, they, that price has given me the confidence to back the Drua. But again, it's a very really small bet for me. But I do think the, the Drua is the right price here. I mean, the right team to back, sorry. I don't yeah, know if it's value or not. I just think, I just think that, yeah, I just think that, you yeah, know, the number, the number tells me that, they, that they're that the right team to back. And I've watched a couple of games. I'm happy with what I saw. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and I've not seen anything from the Rebels to give me any excitement. So I'm a Drua's punter, yeah. Drua punter. Well, yeah, Henrik is saying he's going over, so that's the undertaker calling overs, that's, and, and I tend to. I'm going to say him. that's obvious. Yes, yes, and, plus. but 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 um, but yeah, and, and and I actually also like the overs here, Henrik and and Johanna. And the reason being is, you know, the Drua. I mean, as I said last week, they scored points in absolutely atrocious conditions. I haven't actually checked the conditions in Melbourne, but assuming they're reasonable, Mel Melbourne normally yeah. is a high-scoring. Place and when we saw, like I said earlier, the super round all went overs. So I tend to be with Henrik on this one, but Nathan, interested in your comments because I know you did make the Rebels favorite for this game and, and were a bit surprised with the initial cap. Yeah, I did so. The, this line has flipped from where it opened, and yes, yeah, so I, I, I took the Rebels at, at plus one and a half. And um, just picking up on what the Oracle said, you know, about not being excited about the force, 
about the Rebels. So I'm not excited about the Rebels. <laughs> I, I didn't put that bet on because I was excited about the Rebels. I put it on because I thought there was value there. You know, again, sure. it's not this is not a, a bet that I'm particularly excited about. But you know, like if if again, if you could get a few of these every week, we know where you get uh, you know the line flipping through zero, and and you're on the underdog. You know, ha- again, happy days, right? <laughs> like you know, you'll take that all day long, whether or not you like the team or not. Um, you know, we're, we're not. You don't bet teams, you bet numbers, and, and, and that's what I'm doing here. So I don't love the pick. Um, a quick, I guess, uh, quiz for you guys. How many times have the Drill won away in, in their Super Rugby history? How many years have they been playing? Uh, two and a half now. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'm go under one or two. two and a half. Two and a half? Yeah. I'm under two, two and a half. half. With, I'll, oh, I'll under two, two and a half. half. Yeah, that, well, that, that one would be a winner. Yeah, so they've only they've only won one away game. That was against Moana Pacifica in, in week one last year. Obviously, Moana, pretty terrible. So Does that count, though? They didn't beat a Not really. Super Rugby. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Not Moana, really. Moana would have been playing on – it would almost have been neutral territory, am I right? They probably would have been playing in Auckland or – yeah, that's right. Yeah. I mean, that, that, yeah. that was Auckland, but um, you know, I think okay. they they squeak, squeak home in, in that game. But I mean, I guess my point is that you know that they haven't actually had any real meaningful um, away win in the entire competition. Like they, they would have one of the biggest discrepancies between home home field advantage and you know an away results probably in world sport. Like it's it's really ridiculous. Yeah. Like you know how big the difference is. Um, so look, it will happen eventually. Maybe it happens this week. But um, you know, I. I just think that, you know, based on everything that I can see, that you know, I just all I need is the Rebels to to win a home game against a team that that doesn't win away from home. Um, I'll, I'll I'll take that. Yeah, fair enough. I'm on. Look, I didn't get on the initial line, but I quite like the Rebels here at minus one and a half. I must say though that I'm probably not going to get involved in that. Well, okay, I lie. I took minus one and a half early in the week, so I'm really involved in that. But my main bet here is going to be over the fifty-eight and a half points. I really do like the overs. I think it's going to come home. Smoking a cigar. All right, let's move on to the next game. We've got two Super Rugby games left on the shortened weekend. Big money year for the Chiefs. I think it opened even 23 and a half, 25 and a half. It's moved out to 28 and a half, Nathan. And points line here starting to get pretty high at 65 and a half. Pacific have been very poor their last two matches. But the Chiefs, for all of the talk about them being favorites and at one stage trading as low as even money, they've looked a bit wobbly, especially when uh, when McKenzie's not in the team. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, so um, obviously heavily reliant on him, and he is playing in this game. But they've rotated pretty heavily in a lot of other positions, uh, and so of Mo- Moana actually as well. So the, the kind of the back row for both teams is is pretty inexperienced. For that reason, and probably a few others, like it's probably not something that I'm keen to get too involved in. It's just such a large cap, you know. Like anything can happen. Like, but by definition, when you see a number like that, it's just a, it's a high variance game. Like you know. Anything can happen. It's very diff- different from trying to pick, you know, uh, uh, you know, which side of the line to fall on, you know, around something less than seven. You know, once you get out towards thirty, I mean, the difference between thirty and thirty-five and twenty-five, it's it's kind of meaningless, right? Like it's all just a try in a game which is going to be some sort of crazy shootout anyway. So you know, yeah. I just I kind of feel like you're, you're flipping a coin a little bit here. Chris reckons he'll take the plus if he's pushed here. Um, Oracle, if you were pushed, or are, are you going to need it, to be pushed or you've got an interest in this game? No, this is crazy. 28's not enough. I, I'm, I'm not joking here. This is a case of beers short. This should be minus 50. Honestly, this, this, man, how do you pronounce it? Ma, ma, Moana. 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 Yeah. You know, like the Disney movie. I'm sure you've seen that a few times. No. My kids are older than that. <laughs> and, uh, I've not seen it. But, <laughs> honestly, no, it's not the kind of movies the Oracle watches. <laughs> this, is, this, this Pacific team is absolute rubbish. This is bottom of the barrel stuff. 28 is not enough. And, and I do hear what you're saying. And I remember, you know, when Curry Cup starts every year, and, and I'm going back a few years, the opening handicaps used to be single digits. And then they'd come out with, Cheetahs minus 12 against Grecos. And all I did was lump on the plus 12 and a half because it's too much for the opening weekend. But I don't feel anything like that here. This 28 is not enough. And you're asking for best, best bets of the weekend, Brent. I'm going to tell you this is in the top three already. Only looking at this handicap, it's 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 not, it's probably 40 to 50% of what it should be. Honestly, this is way too low. 
this is going to be a thumping. Thumping. This team's yeah. rubbish. Half a Chiefs yeah. team will beat this team off 45. Yeah. Say what you feel, Gav. Yeah, that's how I feel. This is right. So, and and it's at night, which is a big difference. If this was during the guy the day, you could probably expect this specific a team to score over twenty points. They won't get they won't get over fifteen, and yeah, either this could be 60-50. 55-50. Well, you, men you mentioned best bets, and I just want to say, guys, we're getting into the best bets. We've done very well. We're on fifty minutes. I think the last show the three of us did together came up to about one hour twenty seven or something. It was a new record. I don't think it's finished yet. I think there's people still watching it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we, we did push it today because we know that David's got a hard close. But let's get into the best bets. And Oracle, you almost like you're the host of the show because you mentioned best bets. And that leads us right in. What are your best bets for the weekend? And I'm throw gonna, in a golf yeah. one. Throw in a golf one if you like anything. And tell us about a horse that's running on Saturday, perhaps quickly. Yeah, <laughs> a horse. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a horse. Well, my wife and I do. We won. I won a competition, and and I won one percent of a horse. It's called Ritty Rata. It's running on Saturday in Turfentine in race one. And I got to tell you, it's around about twenty to one. I know nothing about it. The trainer hasn't told us anything. But at twenty to one, the first time, I'm always interested. I know there's a couple. There's a Decock first timer. Uh, I think he paid half a million rand for it. I think ours was, I don't know, 25 grand, something st stupid. But uh, And for you, Nathan, you can divide by, I don't know, like 20 or something to understand what they're probably a thousand of your dollars for this horse. That's all. It's very little. Um, but anyway, Richie Rata running in Turf But what I do like, though, is we were given a work rider race a few weeks ago, and the guy hadn't um, given the um, inoculation certificate for the horse. So the horse couldn't run. So it hasn't run yet. It was supposed to run a couple of weeks ago. He showed up with uh, very little, uh, didn't have the documents. Anyway, uh, standard for Africa, uh, for anyone who's not from here, we're, no surprise to us. Anyway, the horse is running, but we got Samanga Kamalo on board. And i got to tell you, at 20 to 1, a decent draw with Kamalo on board, I'm very interested. And it'll probably get about 5 five to 1, at worst, 4 to 1 a place. So Ritty Writer. Uh, I know nothing about the trainer. His name is Kurbis Rue. And you won't see my name or my wife's name on the owner's list because we only have 1%. But I'm still in. And uh, there's 85,000 Rand you can win in the race. So we get 1%. That's 850. And my last calculations, it's a couple of cases of beer so or, or more for that matter. So I'm quite excited. Anyway, okay. on top of that. Gav, I'm going to uh, stop you there. I'll tell you why. I left out a few. another game. And yeah. So. I, and I was just bragging about how early we're going to finish, and then I've made the mistake of asking you about a horse, and now we're probably under pressure for Nathan, yeah? So, Nathan, let me get your opinion first on, on this, and then we'll do your best bets, and then we'll finish off with, with Gav. Uh, totally yeah, forgot well, about this game. I did have it typed up, but I, I just forgot about it. Probably yeah, minus nine and a half. Well, that, this, I'll kill two birds with one stone then because this would make my bets, best bet list as well. So um, I've, I've taken the Brumbies at minus eight and a half, but I still make it value at nine and a half. I've just, I've just got a sneaky suspicion that the, the coach has been on the hot seat at the Waratahs, like kind of from the beginning of the season. And I think, you know, the wheels are kind of starting to fall off a little bit. Maybe like, um, might be one of those situations where maybe the, the players don't want him or something. I don't know. But like, you know, he's been, he's been a game away from saving his job for about the last, you know, four games. You've got a team that's five and one against a team that's one and five. Like, uh, the Waratahs have, have been poor and, uh, I, you know, I don't have a lot of hope for them here. The, the points is a bit of a shame, actually, because it, it is there is rain. I, I actually had it projected to go under the original points total, which was kind of around 55 and a half, where I took it. Uh, and then there was rain. And on, on top of that, clearly, the you know, the memo's gone out about the rain for it to get down to there. So I think the, the points bet's probably gone. But, yeah, I, I still quite happily take the Brumbies here. But also keep an eye, I think, on the weather, because I've also been looking at that book ops, because I really like the overs in this game at 47 and off the last two meetings between the sides have been high scoring and i look and i see rain forecast for the morning but it might clap in the afternoon so it's one of those cases you know the weather could definitely fluctuate it could, it could be one of those cases where suddenly the 47 and a half start starts looking like a good bet um oracle uh, yeah let me let me get your opinion then i'll jump back to nathan for his best bets what is your view on this game minus brumbies i mean this waratahs hasn't beaten anybody uh, other than that other than that the game in Fiji. Yeah, well, yes. yeah. No, fair enough. 
Yeah, Brumby's minus here, but not a lot. It just seems obvious to me, actually. It's it's weird because ten years ago, this you, know, you would have looked at this and said, "Give me the plus." But this Waratahs team is not what it's what it's been before, and the Brumbies are playing very well at the moment. The games I've watched, I'm all over the Brumbies here. When I say that, yeah, a unit, maybe 0.75 of a unit, not a lot, but I like it. Yeah, I must say, last week they cost me a little bit. I was on the Reds 1 to 12. Brumbies were quite impressive in getting that win. Yeah, but Nathan, exactly. I, know we're I, backed out of the, time. I backed the Reds last week and uh, I was horrified that they were winning by nine with 20 odd minutes to go and they ended up losing the game. It's crazy. Yeah, I was disappointed in that as well. But Nathan, we'll do your best bets and then we can say cheers to you. You can uh, nip off and do some, some actual work, if I can put it that way. <laughs> what are your best bets for the weekend then? Uh, so, Brumbies, we just covered. And then looking at USC, uh, Probably a few that I can't split. So um, I, I, I saw you had eight and a half up for the Warriors, uh, which you know has, has come up from six and a half. So eight and a half definitely like it. You know I was sort of keen at six and a half, eight and a half. Um, pretty keen on that. Um, Storm as we talked about, um, keen on that one, and I think Bath as well. Those would be the, probably the, the main ones that I'm looking at. Excellent. Well, I'll, uh, if you do you want to nip off, what do you want to hear? Oracle's best rugby bets. Have you got time? Uh, I, if you can do it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a call then and say cheers to you now. <laughs> I don't think Eric is going to do his best bets in a minute. But no, David, it'll be great chatting to you. Um, best, uh, all the best to you for the weekend. And yeah, we'll be in contact next week and uh, hopefully talking about a few winners as well. Yeah, nice one. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Nathan. Cheers, Nathan. Thanks very much, man. Right, Oracle, there's no pressure on you now, mate. The hard clothes uh, that Nathan has is no longer a factor. And you can run us for your best bet. If you want any last comments on the horse, sorry, man, I cut you there because I didn't want to lose no, it's just, Nathan uh, at 10 o'clock. You know, I've always, it's a, yeah, I'm just excited to finally be in a horse. And I know you, you've you got, um, I forget his name for the moment. Sorry, coming to Joburg to um, watch his race with you. That's it, yeah. Chris Turney's always... coming up. He's got a, yeah, he's got a share. His wife got a share in, in Royal Victory that won the Summer Cup. Is also trading at about 6-1. to one. So we're actually going to the track. I haven't been to the track in absolute years. We've got tickets to the Elevation Room. It's really going to be great. Fetching him from the airport. We're going to do plenty of beers. A little bit of long-term strategizing on Good for the Game. Him and I have been running the site now for 15 years this year. Yeah. And, yeah, it might be time to make a few changes. We'll see. Uh, certainly on the YouTube side, we'll pretty much carry on as normal. But, Gav, what are your best bets in for the weekend? Yeah, I think uh, I like the Bulls minus. Uh, I like Bath. Uh, I like the Chiefs minus. Uh, and I definitely like the Stormers. So those are my four. Um, I haven't quite decided which one's the best one. They all feel very good to me. Um, and the Drew, I suppose, from the Australian side and the Brumbies. But, yeah, for me, Bulls, Bulls minus, Stormers, Bath, and uh, Chiefs minus, minus 28. I know it sounds a lot. It really does. But, geez, it'll be over in 32 minutes. That that Pacifica team is absolute rubbish. Simple as that. I've been enjoying the IPL. I, I backed Gujarat tonight. They lost in the last over. I've, I've, I'm probably slightly down on IPL, but I've enjoyed the tournament so far. And... Um, yeah, did you say the golfs this weekend? I didn't even know the Masters. Is it no, this yeah, weekend? Next week, Masters? The Masters. I was just going to say, I haven't no, heard anything US about Masters is, No, no, it's the Texas Valero, Texas Open this week. It's the okay. US Masters next week. And I say, I'm not into my golf like I used to be. I don't know if it's this whole split between the PGA Tour and Live Golf, but the US Masters always gets me going. It's a great tournament. It does, but I think there's also a few less South Africans than there were. And I read an article so, uh suggesting that our golden time is over and unless we get some more hot pot uh, golfers and i mean I, one of my mates kids uh, had lunch with me on saturday and he's a scratch golfer and i said to him would he be interested in going you know is he going to further his golf and he said no you know i think there's not a lot of motivation in youngsters i was i was watching uh, or should i say i was reading a listening to sorry not watching or watching or reading i was listening to a podcast in new zealand uh on youtube today suggesting that um what are they going to do about rugby uh, more than more kids are playing basketball and soccer in schools and i think south africa's the opposite i think more people are playing rugby today than than were five years ago and um yeah new zealand needs to uh, to fix that 
because they they won't win World Cups without school kids playing rugby. Yeah, it's a good point. And I think one of the reasons for South African rugby becoming so popular, well, no, it's always been popular, let's face it, but one of the reasons... <laughs> Winning the Cup of World Cups, why not? But I think, yeah, but I think some of the, the, the exposure that schoolboy rugby gets now on TV, on Supersport, on the YouTube channels and that, I mean, that can only be good for the game, you know, good for the game. I just threw that in there. But, I mean, it really, uh, I think our coverage of schoolboy rugby is second to none. I doubt there's another country that gives this sort of exposure to schoolboy rugby. Yeah, they were saying that they're doing the same in New Zealand. Excuse me, I'm busy yawning yeah, after a long day. Uh, and they were saying that's the problem is that it's rubbing out the smaller schools. And I think the TV broadcasters, you know, super sport in this case, might well want to run a game, you know, the two, you know, Cares and Jeppy or whatever it is, or Kersney and Hilton. But they should be showing smaller teams play as well, smaller schools. And that might be a curtain raiser to a bigger game like that, or even in, you know, invite them to, I, I've always seen it in, in Kings Park, is they'll have a schoolboy game before the Sharks game. And that's great. Why not? You could you could have a few starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, you know, running up to a 3 o'clock kickoff or a 5 o'clock Super Rugby or URC game or Curry Cup game, or whatever it is. I think there's a lot that they can do for for rugby and and as you say putting it on tv does make a difference but at the same time it's also elevating that team above the rest saying well we, we got tv coverage so the right thing to do is to spread that out nicely and include teams that you know schools sorry not teams schools that don't have um the best players but are reasonable in their little league why not you know that's how that's how people get found you, you know, you're not going to find the best batsman by going to only the top schools in South Africa. You're going to find the best batsman by going to watch cricket matches all over the place. No, 100% agree with you on that one, Gab. As far as my best get bet goes, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but I will be sending out a newsletter this week. And uh, you can, so there is a link to that if you haven't subscribed yet. That's down in the description box below. That pretty much brings us to the end of the show. Let's see, Henrik makes a comment on what we've just chatted about now. Rugby alive and well. His eight-year-old son, eight son plays at school. Ah, oh, Henrik, my son's in varsity now, as you heard earlier, but I really do miss school rugby. Um, and they practice in the evening at the academy and play games for the school and the academy. Yes, 100%. Lots of the youth coming up, and it really is great. And, Gav, I know you still get to watch your, your son play a bit of rugby. Is he playing this season? Yes, playing club rugby after school. So that's also the thing is they're playing after school. I mean, it's they're carrying on. They're not stopping. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, I just drove to Pretoria and found the rain intervened, but hopefully next week I'll catch some varsity rugby as well. Gav, it's been great having you on the show, mate. Go and get a bit of an early night now. I could see you you, you, you. you held up well during the show, but that yawn near the end there tells me you need a good night's sleep. I'm going to watch the rest of um, Dumb Money. So they call it, the movie's called Dumb Money, but in South Africa we, we would have called it Mug Money. If you haven't seen it, it's a uh, it's a stock-breaking program about these little guys beating the big guys, and it's a great show. So if you've got nothing to do, it's on Netflix, Dumb Money. I highly recommend it. I'm watching it for the second time with my wife tonight. So, yeah, she's waiting for me over there. And I don't care if I fall and asleep. How many, how many series is it? An episode? Is it? No, it's a movie. I'll definitely watch that. It's a movie. One no, movie. movie. Dumb Money. Okay, now I'll watch that. I'll watch Two that. hours. Yeah. Okay, so well, let's close out with Mark's comment. Oracle, brilliant as usual. He also thinks I'm looking rather orange tonight. Gav, thanks very much. Thanks to the guys in the live chat. Excellent show. Thanks to the Moss Man who's logged off. We'll see you next week for the Handicap Rugby Chat That Matters.